so somebody gave me this a graphic in the hand and when I saw the graphic, um, I just saw it. It's just another concept. I'm not really interested in learning a concept here. So I kind of took it out of my hands and um, not went any deeper with it till um, I took it again in my hands where I found that the option of um, action and receiving is uh, something that's possible. So I start practicing with that and found myself pretty fast, very confused in a dynamic that I just wanted to do something to somebody else to get a response. And um, that kind of guided me deeper and deeper into confusion and um, um, questioning how the wheel really works. And the more I was trying to get my head around that, the more I found out that it didn't work because there was something going on that I could not comprehend. So then I choose to um, found out what the deeper reality of that was and attended the workshop where the wheel got taught. And um, we started with a very simple exercise. I would like to start um, with each one of you too. That is, a very simple um, gives a very simple understanding how they done how the dynamics are and first I would like to show you a little graphic about that what we're just going to do um, so we start with one specific dynamic and this dynamic is the somatic idea of how touch works in this modality is that the somatic nervous system is divided in two different divisions. And um, one of them is a sensory division or the so-called afferents, where we, where we having sensations that are going through our nervous system that we notice what's going on. So it can be something internally, signals from your organs, it can be pain, pleasure, joy, anything you can imagine. It's the, the afferent dynamic of the sensory part of the, of the nervous system is literally collecting data. So there are different nerve endings tracking different sensations in the body. And this is what we want to have a look at. And then there's the, the motor division, what's the afferent. And um, I want to have a look here. Okay, so what's the what's the uh, motor division is sending signals from the brain into our hand and into our skin and literally um, moving our hand, moving our arm. So that the dynamics of um, the um, action, so doing an action, the motor and experiencing something is what we wanna go and play with. So what the entire dynamic of the 64 day waking up that hands challenge is. And um, as it's here in that picture, um, I would like to show you how we start with that. So what I would like you to do is, and I have prepared a little table here. It is um, taking any kind of object that you find somewhere around you. And it doesn't matter really what it is because we want to play with a specific dynamic that is related to the, sensual, to the sensory inflow of our hand. So it can be a piece of plastic or a, um, can be a fossil or a stone, um, kind of a little piece of wood or a, or a shell, a cork or a piece of metal, a pen, a um, little plastic tiger. It, really doesn't matter what it is. What really matters is that you take an object that's around you and you choose an action um, and uh, take something in your hands. And I just take uh, just a piece of metal. And the idea um, um, how to touch that is that you lean back, get really comfortable and I'll show you that here. You just take a cushion in your hand, uh, on your lap, have that object in your hand, and kind of lean your arms and your shoulders. Let's move that here a little bit upwards. Okay, so you move your, you move your shoulders mm -hmm. and your arms that you sit relaxed. 
So when you sit relaxed, you relax your spine and you relax your, your trunk, that this is no work. So important is as well that your body is having the chance to be in a resting position. And the first thing I would invite you to do is, and I take a timer, we we'll do that for the first five minutes, is that you just find some information about this object. So that, what is it made of? Um, what's the temperature? Is it solid? Kind of, there are some bumpy parts in there. <sighs> you might even um, give it a label, give it a name uh, or a purpose. What are you using it and what it's, um, what it's for? Important is that you don't need to do anything with it. You can keep your eyes open or your eyes closed. And, um, and then I'm asking you just like to slow down your speed so that you just don't go into any goal. So it has no, no agenda, there's nowhere to go. You just sit there and just, and just feel it. And your mind wonders or you might have some thoughts coming up and just be with the, with the sensation in your hands and just bring your attention just to the pure sensation of your skin in your hands. So there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to give here, there's nothing to get. And just to feel it. Oh. Allow yourself to breathe as much as you like and still keep your attention straight on the sensation in your hands. You might have some feelings coming up or judgments. Just stay with it. And bring your attention back to the sensation. Your hands moving very fast. I invite you to slow down the speed by half. Just explore some different parts of your hands. Maybe somewhere here between your fingers. Or you might even hold your hand and then stroke with the object with the other hand over it. If that's easier for you.
And then you notice somehow, somewhere, it feels pleasant on some points. And the invitation is to stay there exactly where it feels just good. All right, so that was the first five minutes. Okay, so what are we playing here is a specific dynamic that needs to go. It's a specific dynamic that um, I have shown you in that picture before. I just want to go back there. Show. So that's what we have been playing with again. So we were going in an action and we were opening up the sensory, the sensory inflow, um, the afferent part of, the, of, of your skin. So that you're just going into an action towards a pleasant sensation in your skin. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. A very simple, easy task. So that we um, use a very simple functioning of our nervous system that has been there from the very early beginning um, as infants. So um, some of you might have children and you have might notice that little children taking everything in their hand and exploring it. And um, because we have more nerve ending in our hands, than anywhere, in, anywhere else in our body except our mouth and our genitals, we start as infants to take everything in our hand and play with it and explore it till somebody else is telling us that's dirty or not to do that or don't uh, put that in your mouth. And um, so, so for some good reasons to protect us in a way, but somehow we, we stop using the kind of innocence explorative dynamic of feeling with our hands. So the hands in itself, they are symbolic for giving and receiving. And most of us have learned as adults the way how we functioning and how we are conditioned that we're using only hands only to do something and we conflate the action or the, the doing with giving something. So we're doing something with our hands and providing something so that, we, that we're trying to belong or we're trying to um, please, or we're trying to give something to um, um, be allowed to be here to some degree. So that's um, uh, very generalized and for most people true, I imagine. So what we want to do in here with the Waking Up the Hands challenge is that we want to come back into feeling with our hand so that the action in our hands is not based on we doing something and giving it so that we actually the first thing when i ask you to choose an object around you that you were going in an action to receive something and doing it for yourself so then i would like to show you the next picture oh, it's that one here and this is what we call the three components of pleasure. So all of the three components of pleasure, they are all existing simultaneously. So they are here. So when you have it in your hands and when I ask you to um, um, start feeling it, 
the way how the mind and the brain is working, so our neocortex, is we start labeling things. So we put that somewhere in a box and it has a purpose. So what is it that we're doing with it? So that you see here um, that you can choose where your attention is going. So that when you take something in your hands and you think, oh, this, this is just plastic. I'm, I don't want to touch any plastic. Plastic is not working for me. Or this is just a pen. I use a pen for writing something. Um, why would I feel that? So it's just like it's an automatic mechanism in our um, nervous system that the purpose-related function of objects does us not allow to some degree to do some different um, things with it. So it doesn't really matter what you take in your hands. Um, our mind goes automatically super fast to create um, a purpose around that and we label that and all the other stuff around that. But when you, when you take something in your hands and you look here in this, in this um, picture of the three components in the right corner, there's a stimuli. And the stimuli, this is exactly what we are looking for. And I wanna just like um, go back here to the uh, table with the objects. What is this right here? As you see, there are so many different objects. You know, and what, what, whatever, there, whatever there is on an object, when you do that, every object, of course, brings you a different set of data, a different set of information. And when you feel them, you would get a different kind of stimuli. So when you just take them in your hand, so some is really solid and, and, and kind of and hard, and, and some is more like smooth and... Um, some is just like rough and bumpy and, um, and feels different. So that the stimuli is the raw form of data that comes into your um, sensory cortex. So going back to this other picture. So that the, that the stimuli um, is the raw information of what you, um, what you feel. It's kind of the, the, nerve, ending, the nerve ending in your, in your hand, in your skin here, is sending from your hands a signal in your sensory cortex. And it's telling you somewhere there, just like, um, yeah, that's soft this is hard, this is bumpy, and your motor is literally sending impulses to your hands and kind of trying to explore or just like figuring stuff out. But instead of figuring it out and getting some more information in the box in your mind, we ask you in this challenge to just find a sensory pleasant sensation. And the sensory pleasant sensation is, when you slow it down enough, when you don't use too much pressure, but sometimes pressure can as well feel really nice, so kind of really squeezing it hard, that you feel some sensations of pleasure. So that the, that the stimuli for the five minutes of feeling it is that where I invite you to bring your attention to. So the meaning part of pleasure is when you feel something, yeah, this is a shell that, that I found somewhere on the beach in, in Hawaii and all the memories coming to it. Yeah, and that, that gives me the sensation of sunshine and ocean. Then you create a meaning to the stimuli. But the idea here is not to create um, a, a meaning to the stimuli. The idea is to bring present moment awareness, all of your attention, just to the stimuli. Five minutes, just all you can, all you are capable of to be fully present for five minutes, just you and your nerve endings feeling something. So um, I wanna go back to this steps and I hope you can all read that and see that. 
So the steps are again, so you sit down and you lean back. So you relax, you relax your, your, your trunk and you relax your shoulders and your arms. And let's put that. Um, and um, so you pick up any kind of object that you just have in uh, around you, can be whatever it is that you have. Um, you rest your hands on a pillow that you're feeling kind of really comfortable. You take a timer for about five minutes or as long as you like. I recommend minimum three. Um, so I explain in, in the next um, um, round in about five to 10 minutes why that is. Um, and then slow down your speed by half and slow it down by half again so that you just really kind of stop going in action and doing something with it. It's just like you just have it in your hand and you feel it. And then start noticing every detail you can. Where is your breath? And still feel the sensation in your hands. Um, might, you can't, might feel your heartbeat. You might feel your skin on other parts leaning against the chair you're sitting on. Bring it straight back to your hands and just bring it all focused to this very point where you feel it with your hands, with your fingers. And then look for something that feels pleasant, that feels pleasurable, that feels nice, and that can be anywhere where you um, find it. And uh, might find some numb parts on your hand where you're not feeling much. Just stay there where it feels good already and play with that one. And again, it doesn't matter if your mind wanders, just bring it all back to your hands. So in this case, I invite you to take another object so that you see it has nothing to do with the object. It has to do with the sensation in your hands. And um, um, just something, I'll take the shell. And again, lean back. Ah, timer starts now, five minutes. Hmm. Do the sign you really want to. Keep your eyes open or closed, so experiment with it. We might feel more, if you normally keep your eyes open, close them. If you normally close them, keep them open. Just stay with the level of sensation there in your hand and let your body just do what your body is doing and just stay there. Or you might even want to use it with your cushion you're having on your lap. And just allow yourself to feel this pleasant sensation there. You might want to rest your hand completely that there is no sensory data coming in for a few seconds. And then you just might want to move with some micro movements.
then you might notice that the sensation there on your skin has nothing to do with the object, that the stimuli is this nerve ending on your fingers, which is sending a signals in your sensory cortex. And then on one point again, it might feel really pleasant somewhere, something. <sighs> Have nothing has nothing to do with sex or relationship. And you might wonder when you come in connection with some feeling of, oh, it is awkward or there's some shame. So just welcome that as well. So just allow yourself to feel whatever comes into your body and stay on this level of sensations with your hands. Different people experience different feelings and sensations. And whatever yours is, is absolutely all right. Doesn't have to go anywhere. Hmm. Just you and your sensation. So what I notice about when I feel that, so I do that, it's like a meditation for me. And what I notice in my own body is that my shoulders relaxing, my breath is getting calm and my nervous system is settling into a state of parasympathetic. That was not always the case. So when I started with this practice about, I don't know, 2014, um, I was, I was a little bit in shock, <laughs> in shock because I noticed how much of my skills of the techniques of body work and using my hands to get response out of people that I was touching was, um, was dependent on the other person's response. And when I saw how little I actually could feel and stay really attentive to my own sensations, I could not believe how little I was explorative and really felt for myself. So that the connection with my partner um, this time was pretty much touch related only that I get a response back from her. So that I'm good in body work and I'm good in, in giving something and how little I was Uh, what's the word? I was missing the word here. How, how little I was capable of actually feeling something. And there was layer of um, that was shameful and felt not allowed to do that. Um, what goes on another level later in this process, if you want to touch somebody else and feel yourself, you don't need a skill or what you need is their permission. So you need to ask them that they can touch you and that they can actually keep themselves in the place that they can keep their limits if they don't like it. As long as you don't do something to get a response, just feeling yourself. And that was what happened to me. So I could just feel myself on 
somebody else or on my partner only to the degree till I start feeling shame and awkward, till I start feeling embarrassed or oh, this is too much, this is how much I can feel, but not that much. And then I notice as well how many times people were touching me and wanting to get the same response out of me who could not feel themselves either. So that I actually realized that my own touch and the, the touch of most people's, um, or, or the touch of most people was related to get this response instead of feeling themselves. So that I just had to dig into myself and had to just like break through these layers of um, suppressed, conditioned, not welcoming feelings that I had. So, and from that, I would like to show you one more piece um, and sharing the screen here. Okay, that was. And then that's gone. I keep working up my hand. So that. And this is what I want to show you next is that um, when we start taking something in our hand and we start activating the noticing brain, this is a really fantastic mechanism. So there's a really good book from David Linden around that. I was um, um, sticking my nose in and uh, researching how that all works in the brain. So when we take something in our hand and feeling that, the pure sensory data that comes into our brain goes into the sensory cortex. And when it goes into the sensory cortex, um, it goes as well into the so-called feeling center. And it's not the pleasure center yet. So the feeling center is what our feelings and what our emotional state to that specific touch is. So if we are not if we're getting touched or if we're touching somebody else and we are not feeling safe with the person that we're touching, our nervous system is literally creating a sympathetic state that does not allow us to feel anything. So what happens is when we're not feeling safe in a situation, specifically when it comes to touch in, and we're just like looking here from the part of the meaning making that Touch means, oh, this is now relationship, this is love, now it has to go to sex, and now uh, um, it has to go to orgasm. And so this entire um, shebang around the meaning um, can create a lot of pressure and a lot of stress in our nervous system. So that our amygdala, our fight flight center, is <coughs> uh, sending us into an alert state that. Um, literally numbs this part of our emotional center, of our, our pleasure center, that we cannot feel a sensual uh, inflow through that. So, and so this is, this is what happens is, and all of a sudden we're just coming in a very subtle connection with fear or with some um, unpleasant feeling of shame. And we creating here in our working brain, we're creating a story. So the meaning part is around here. So where we, where we try to work out what's going to happen and we're just trying to make it work even if we can't feel anything. And so when we're just pushing ourselves enough and when we're pressuring ourselves enough, we're actually creating more stress and more fear in our body to feel less so that our nervous system to a certain degree, and that can be subtle or, or sometimes even overwhelming, is going from the sympathetic, um, from, from, from the fear or from the fight flight response to um, unsafe um, parasympathetic state, what is the so-called shutdown space or where we're getting numb or not feeling anything. So when you de dissociate, for example, so what we do with the, here with the stimuli, um, with the object, when we bring all our attention, and this is really fantastic in here, is we start to activate our noticing brain. So when we start activating our noticing brain, we 
start, when we're slowing down enough, we start to release oxytocin in our central brain. And the release of oxytocin, when we're feeling something for about five minutes, after three minutes, plus or minus a little bit more or less, the oxytocin that is released is start to inhibiting, so blocking the release of cortisol and adrenaline that brings our fight and flight center into an alert. So when we do that for three or five minutes and bring all our attention to the stimuli and to the sensing feeling, our nervous system is calming back down when we're feeling suppressed, any kind of um, sensations in the body, it calms it back down in a relaxed space. You notice that about yourself when you're doing this um, exercise, when you're doing this breath like a sigh. <sighs> and you sink in and then just like, oh, that's just nice. There's nothing to do. There's nowhere to go. It's just sweet. And what happens is your nervous system is self-regulating through the release of oxytocin back into a place of calmness and the, the possibility of connection. So through the release of oxytocin as a pathway of action towards pleasure is re-stimulating and reactivating neural pathways in your brain. And that's the reason why it's not about a one-time shot, it's not about a one or two day shot, it's about a lifelong process. So when we do that for about 64 days, so the idea comes from this uh, Chinese story, you put one rice corn on the first field of a chess um, plate, and then two on the second, and you double that, and then uh, four on the third, and uh, eight, and 16, and it, the first kind of 10, 20 feel, it does not look much. So when you do it once, just like, yeah, okay, that doesn't work and you put it aside. So, but when you just go up to 40, 45, 50 days, your neurological pathways, they're completely response and functioning differently. So that when you would go even on 60 or more days, you need more rice than the entire Chinese culture could ever have produced since hundreds of years. So this is what happens in your brain. You create neurological pathways that realigning um, your, your brain through the release of oxytocin. So that you literally, the more you feel, the more you stay attuned with yourself. So that we're just finding back into the raw function of this neurological pathways of feeling stuff and making it um, beneficial for our own action. So I um, would like to go into the next picture here. And this is where it will go. So let's say on a, on a daily base, um, specifically at the moment when we kind of more fear oriented or we uh, because we don't know if we can go out or we don't know how to connect with others. So the sense of touch and connection and release of oxytocin is one of the most important um, needs of our existence. So it's just after breathing and sleeping um, and uh, even drinking, I think, is on number four, that touch and connection is important for our nervous system to stay regulated. So touch and connection is specifically an action for ourselves that we're feeling something is a vital part of existence. So if we don't have that, we're creating, this is what I call the numbness bar, it just creates a, a sensation um, of... Um, trying to avoid and suppress any feelings at all. So it is up here on about 75% or something that we trying not to engage with feelings. So we're just bringing it further up and staying all in our head and creating the story that we don't want to feel anything. So what will happen when you practice that for about maybe 20, 30 days, 
your numbness bar will go down. So you will start feeling more and not only the sensual pleasure, your, all your feelings will come online. So that means the more you level your numbness bar down to a low level um, uh, experience of about up to 10%, you pretty immediately start feeling things when they occur in your body on another level than trying to avoid to feel anything. So this is a practice that is activating your feeling center and allows you to feel back what is going on in the moment. So what is literally um, an internal process is as well as somatic process that all the neurotransmitter, they're causing their feeling, they're traveling through your vagus nerve into your brain where all the sensation getting processed and instead of trying a story around that and trying to heal and fix and repair some sensation that we have in our body, we're just dropping straight in our noticing brain and can welcome and allow all feelings on all spectrums. So when I'm in a challenging situation, I have stuff in my hand and play with it. I'm staying in connection, I bring all my attention to the sensation and feel at the same time. And this is an ongoing process that I um, do automatically. So it's not a, I sit five minutes and just I'm trying to feel something as a meditation. It becomes a process of being, a process of isness. And that will change the reality being present with that what is. And that's, that's, that's a lifelong process, and that's so fantastic. So, um, on that point, I invite you to get another object. And um, whatever that is, in this case, I, take a, I have a little massage cross and uh, take that here and let's go another five minutes and um, I invite you for five minutes without talking, without thinking, without doing anything just to feel.
Hmm, interesting. I had some sadness coming up. And then I just created that story kind of just like, oh, I just miss my lover. Oh. And, um, and then there was some thoughts coming up. Um, and I just brought it straight back. And, uh, and then I got a little bit turned on. I just went for a few moments and and then this sigh happens and then my nervous system kind of shifts in this place of, of ease and and this this is what I'm grateful for in the process so that I have found this self-regulating dynamic uh, specifically when it comes to touching people I'm with so when I'm connected with people so that can create a touch um, that does not need to be sexual. And when I want to be sexual, that sexual touch is based on the foundation of sensual oxytocin connection based engagement. And that makes a tremendous shift in being with each other. <laughs> 